When close friends and frequent collaborators Martin Scorsese and Robert De Niro teamed up to make The Irishman, released in 2019, it was the duo's first feature-length movie together in 24 years. Their previous film was the 1995 Las Vegas mob drama Casino, also starring Joe Pesci, Sharon Stone and James Wood. Now regarded as a classic Scorsese flick, the film is exceptionally violent and tragic, but beautiful and exuberant, and its reputation has only gotten better and better with time. Bury yourself in these 40 interesting facts and trivia about the film. Number 1. Like with most Scorsese crime films, Casino is based on true life events. Many of the characters in the film are based on real life people, such as Robert De Niro's Sam Ace Rothstein being modelled on Chicago sports handicapper and mafia associate Frank Lefty Rosenthal, and Joe Pesci's Nicky Santoro being based on mobster and jewel thief Anthony the Ant Spilotro. The movie follows the two's complicated friendship, including Spilotro's adulterous relationship with Rosenthal's wife, the Las Vegas showgirl Jerry McGee, called Ginger McKenna in the film, who died of a drug overdose in 1982. Many of the scenes and plot points, including the casino skimming, car bombing, the Teamsters loans, the hammer to the hand beating, and much more occurred in real life. Number two, perhaps the most violent and difficult to watch scene in the film is where Nicky Santoro tortures a man by squeezing his head in a vice so tight that his eye pops out of his face. Audiences might be shocked to learn that this incident actually happened when Anthony Spilotro tortured gangster Billy McCarthy for an unauthorised hit on the Scalvo brothers. However, instead of having his throat slit, McCarthy was set on fire. So as bad as it was in the movie, it was worse in real life. Number three, Scorsese included the scene of the head in the vice as a sacrifice, expecting the Motion Picture Association of America, the MPAA, to insist that it was cut to avoid an NC-17 rating. His hope was that the extremity of the scene would take away the attention from the other violent scenes in the film. To Scorsese's surprise, the MPAA did not object to the scene, so it was left in the movie albeit slightly censored. Number 4. Casino was the first Scorsese film to be edited digitally. Number 5. Scorsese's film has some huge connections to his next mafia film starring De Niro and Pesci, 2019's The Irishman. The principal plot of Casino involves the mafia sending Rothstein to Vegas to run the mob-controlled casino, the Tangiers. We are told that the Teamsters Labour Union provided loans from their union pension fund to the mob for them to build and run Las Vegas casinos. This, of course, is referenced in The Irishman, which is largely concerned with Teamsters Union President Jimmy Hoffa, played by Al Pacino in his first and only film with Martin Scorsese. In fact, there is even a scene in The Irishman where we see Hoffa approve a $1.5 million loan to the mob to fund new casinos. It's not difficult to believe that Hoffa may have funded the Stardust Casino, which the Tangiers is based on. And that isn't the only Irishman connection. For example, in Casino, a consultant to the Teamsters, the mob-connected Andy Stone, helps the mob in their skimming of the casinos. This character is based on the real-life Alan Dorfman, who is a supporting character in The Irishman, played by Jack Hoffman, via a freeze frame and some text. The Irishman tells us that Dorfman was shot to death in a parking lot eight times, and if you remember correctly, this is exactly what happens to Stone in Casino. Number six, when Ace is denied his gaming license in the film, he hangs around the casino by starting his own television show, Ace is High. In real life, Frank Rosenthal really did host his own TV show called The Frank Rosenthal Show, and some of the guests included Frank Sinatra, OJ Simpson, Bob Hope, and Casino co-star, comedian Don Rickles. Number 7. Before changing it to a more operatic theme, originally Scorsese was going to use The House of the Rising Sun by The Animals for the opening credits, a song which is later featured towards the end of the film during the murder montage. Number 8. Just like with many other Scorsese films, such as Mean Streets and Goodfellas, Martin Scorsese's own mother, Catherine Scorsese, is in the film playing the mother of Artie Piscano, who prophetically warns him that he'll have a heart attack if he doesn't calm down. She would die in 1997, 
two years after the film's release. Number 9. In Scorsese's Raging Bull, Robert De Niro inadvertently broke one of Joe Pesci's ribs during a boxing training scene. In Casino, Pesci would break the same rib again when he is bundled into the cornfield grave towards the end of the film. Number 10. Similar to how his character Tommy is killed in Goodfellas, Joe Pesci's Nicky Santoro isn't thought to have been buried alive in a desert in real life, but Anthony Spilotro and his brother Michael Spilotro were murdered in an Illinois basement where they believed Michael was going to be inducted into the Mafia. Number 11. Scorsese once said of Casino, There is no plot. It's three hours, no plot. So you know this going in. There's a lot of action, a lot of story, but no plot. Number 12. Sharon Stone, the only actor in the film nominated for an Oscar, auditioned for the part of Jake LaMotta's wife in Scorsese's Raging Bull 15 years before Casino, but didn't win the role. Other actresses considered for the role of Ginger in Casino were Uma Thurman, Amber Smith, Nicole Kidman, Madonna, Cameron Diaz, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Reen Russell. Number 13. When actor James Woods learned that Scorsese was interested in a role for him, he called Scorsese's office and left a message saying, Any time, any place, any part, any fee. Number 14. Casino had a costume budget of a whopping $1 million. Robert De Niro had 70 different costumes throughout shooting, all made from scratch, and Sharon Stone had 30 to 40, some custom and some vintage. Both actors were allowed to keep their costumes after filming concluded. Number 15. Incredibly, in spite of the film being a mob drama, there are more than 7,000 extras in the film, with a stunning 120 speaking roles. Number 16. Sharon Stone's first two auditions for Scorsese were cancelled, and she became convinced that the director was avoiding her. When she was contacted by Scorsese's reps for a third attempt, she herself turned it down and instead went out to dinner with a friend leading to Scorsese personally tracking her down at the restaurant she was dining at to make a personal audition request. Number 17. This is one of the earlier concept art posters for the movie. The tagline reads, There was a time on the strip when murder settled bets, blackmail evened the odds, and revenge was the payout. This is the story of the good old days. Number 18. The producers of Casino said one of the most difficult things about the film was finding people who were willing to tell them how to cheat in casinos. Number 19. As is tradition in Scorsese films, much of the dialogue was improvised, in particular the scenes between Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci. Scorsese would tell them where to start and where he wanted them to end, but often the rest of the dialogue was made up by the duo. Number 20. The shot of Joe Pesci gasping for breath as he's buried alive isn't actually Joe Pesci, but an animatronic device. Number 21. Joe Pesci's ex-wife, who he was married to during the filming of Casino, was Claudia Harrell, who played Trudy, the co-hostess and band leader of Aces High. In the year 2000, she was convicted of two counts of attempted murder for hiring a hitman to try to murder her other ex-husband, a stuntman. Number 22. The film's casino scenes were shot in a real casino, the Riviera, and the method in which the filming did not intrude in the casino's business and the gamblers was to shoot from around 1am to 4am late at night and early in the morning. Number 23. In order to avoid continuity errors, Robert De Niro always held his cigarette in the film the same distance from the lit end so that their lengths did not appear to change. Number 24. At one point in the film, Sam Ace Rothstein laments the fact that Nicky's name has been added to the infamous Black Book, noting that you're in there with Al Capone. In reality, Capone, who De Niro played in The Untouchables, interestingly, was never in the Black Book. In fact, in real life, instead of Nicky, the real-life Rothstein, Frank Rosenthal, was the one placed in the Black Book, and he was the one who was run out of Las Vegas. Number 25. Casino held the record for the most uses of the F-word at the time of its release. I'm seeing a few different reports on how many times exactly it's said, but 435 seems to be the most concrete answer, which averages at 2.4 times per minute. The record would later be broken by another Scorsese film, The Wolf of Wall Street. Number 26. 
Much has been made about the similarities between Casino and the other Scorsese gangster film written with Nicholas Pileggi and starring Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci and Frank Vincent, 1990's Goodfellas. Interestingly, both the film and the book might have never gotten made had it not been for Goodfellas. As reports suggest, the real Frank Rosenthal was not interested in Pileggi's idea to write a book about his life. It was only after he learned that a movie would be adapted from the book, directed by Martin Scorsese and perhaps starring Robert De Niro, that he agreed to do it, because he was a big fan of Goodfellas and De Niro's performance in the film. Number 27. The real-life casino in which the events took place, the Stardust Casino, is referenced in the movie via the film's soundtrack, as the song Stardust is played three different times throughout the film. Number 28. Martin Scorsese's favourite shot of the film is the overhead shot of Sharon Stone at the craps table when she is throwing chips up in the air. Number 29. Joe Pesci bore some resemblance to the real life Tony Spilotro, a resemblance which was amplified when the actor was in makeup. According to Nicholas Pileggi, author of the book the film is based on and co writer of the film's script, some pit bosses who had known Spilotro almost fainted when they saw Pesci in character. Number 30. The real-life lefty, who died in 2008, said he only saw the movie once, which means it must have been a screening of an earlier cut in which the only other attendee was Nicholas Pileggi. According to Pileggi, Rosenthal's reaction was positive, but towards the end of his life, in an interview, Rosenthal mentioned the following. It lacked the detail of what I did. There are scenes where the Rosenthal character repeated the same thing twice. I would only tell you to do something one time. That's all I needed. And there was that scene that still angers me when I think of it. I never juggled on the Frank Rosenthal show. I resent that scene. It makes me look foolish. And I only did that TV show at the behest of the chairman of the board of the Stardust so that the public would realise I was a decent guy and not a mobster as portrayed by the media covering us at the time. Perhaps Rosenthal changed his opinion of the movie over time. Or Pileggi wasn't exactly being truthful when he gave Rosenthal's opinion of the film. We may never know. Number 31. Martin Scorsese and Robert De Niro were both close to making Clockers, the Spike Lee film starring Harvey Keitel, before they chose to make Casino instead. Number 32. Oscar Goodman, who is Rothstein's attorney in the film, is a real-life lawyer who defended many Las Vegas mobsters. He would go on to be elected mayor of Las Vegas in 1999. Number 33. By the time the film started shooting, author Nicholas Pileggi hadn't yet finished writing the novel. Number 34. All of the dealers in the film, where possible, worked or had worked in Las Vegas. In fact, you may have recognised Nick Mazzola from other Hollywood films, such as when he played a blackjack dealer in the Tom Cruise Dustin Hoffman film Rain Man. Number 35. As part of De Niro's preparation for the film, he met the real-life Frank Rosenthal. Number 36. Frank Marino, played by Frank Vincent, is based on mob enforcer Frank Colota. The real-life Colota was a consultant on the set of the film and even had a role in the movie, playing the hitman who performs most of the murders in the montage at the end of the film. Number 37. You may have noticed that they never actually mention in the film which mob is being depicted and there may have been good reason for this. The studio were nervous about pressure from the real-life Chicago mob, so all references to the Chicago mob were taken out or edited, such as when Nicky and Ace reference Chicago, they simply say, back home. Number 38. The distinctive opening title sequence was created by Saul Bass, the most famous designer of opening film credits. Chances are, if you saw a film in the 50s or 60s with cool opening credits, Bass was the designer. His works include Psycho, North by Northwest, Vertigo, West Side Story and It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. Scorsese was a huge fan and got him to create the opening titles for Goodfellas, Cape Fear, The Age of Innocence and Casino, which turned out to be the last film of his career as he died around five months after the release of Casino. Number 39. The scene of the casino being demolished at the end of the film is real, as this is footage of the demolishing of the dunes in 1993 and 1994. And finally, number 40, Frank Vincent, 
who is beaten with a bat in his first movie with Joe Pesci, The Death Collector, which is the film Scorsese and De Niro watch to discover Pesci and Vincent, and who is then beaten by Pesci in Scorsese's Raging Bull, and then is killed by Pesci in Goodfellas, playing a character called Billy Bats, finally gets his revenge in Casino when he beats Joe Pesci to death using a baseball bat. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and hitting the notification button for more videos. You can check out my channel for related content, and thanks for watching.